Hey, Angus here, and today we're reviewing the Caliber. You might be clicking on this video because you want to know if this thing works or not, so we'll run through all the details. I'll try not to waste your time. I'll try to make this review snappy, and I'll try to make some follow-up videos of various experiments. This will just be a kind of first impression, kind of overview review. First thing you might want to know is, does this thing work? I mean, in my opinion, yes, and I'll provide a little bit of evidence for that, but let's run through the cost and what it is first. So for me, I bought and paid for this. This was not any sort of affiliate deal or sponsorship. I don't have an affiliate code, but I have reached out to them to ask them for affiliate code. I always like that when I like a product to see if it give you guys a discount. This cost me about £400, £17 postage. And if you work in dollars, it's probably around about $400. Postage is free in the US. And that I also had to pay a customs charge of £94. So we're talking sort of £500 price range. But when you're thinking about a Calorometer or something like a VO2 Master, like you got the big university ones, they're like 10 grand or $10,000, that kind of price range. You got one called the Pony, and you got one called the VO2 Master. Pony comes from a big rucksack thing. And I mean, they're really cool. You can use them for multiple users and stuff, but they're in the six grand, five grand range. This is 500 pound. Personally, I think it's a little bit of a bargain for what it does. If the promise of this holds true, then this is worth every penny. Let's have a quick look at the device. So it comes in this little pouch. It actually comes in a box, but you store it in this little pouch. So here we go, little pouch. The thing is super light. And when I was showing my son, who was not impressed by this, he thinks it's really cheap because it's so light. But when you want something on your face, you want it to be super light. So it comes with this strap here, and it comes with this kind of baseball style loop, which you would just click together. So I'm like five clicks in like that. You thread it on there. You can adjust it there. I don't know if I'll hold that up to the camera. And that's the actual device there. It's got a little silicone seal over the USB charger. You can charge it like this, or you can take this off. I'll run through that in a second. And that's what the mouthpiece is like. And it kind of inflates on and off like a balloon. I'll quickly just chuck it on for you. So it goes on like that. It's not beautiful, but it is super lightweight. And I have a beard and there's no sort of problem with it at all with the beard. I thought I would have to shave off, but it sits off like that and it kind of inflates up and down as you as you breathe in it and it's fairly adjustable and it's pretty cool. These Velcro things will come off, so this mask will come off. And then this, I'll just show you this because I think a lot of people will have a problem with this. I had a problem with this. This unit is really locked in place. So what you wanna do is thumb and forefinger, hold the mask tightly, and then you pull, push one side down and pull the other side and look, and then it does pop out. That was, you know, it's, in my opinion, that's the worst feature of this mask. So that mask, you can you can dip that in water or some sort of solution. I mean, you wouldn't want to boil it or anything like that because I don't know about this rubber seal in there. But if you wanted to clean that, you could give that a nice clean and make that really clean. Quick question on multiple users. They say no, you can't use it with multiple users. And it's purely just, you could really sanitize this but this, you, there is airflow going through there and that's not been approved for multiple users. But if you're moving it around family members and people who don't mind, I think you could use this for multiple users. Could you have this in a gym setting and actually charge people for that? That's a bit dubious because this isn't entirely hygienic and you wouldn't want anyone catching a nasty virus of someone. And to pop that back in, that just clicks in place. Nice and easy. The taking it out is really, difficult, so you kind of use that leverage system. So that's the mask, that's what it looks like, this is what it comes with. It also comes with a USB-C cable, and every video I've watched from Caliber, they're like, make sure you use our USB-C belts. I actually got gold contacts, so I would use their USB-C cable, and these um, USB-C seals, I would keep those, because there is some airflow going there, and you wouldn't want moisture getting in there. You wanna keep that sealed, you wanna keep that fresh. The other thing I don't like about it is the button on the front is just, it's crap, it's like, it's, it's hard to know if you've pressed it or not. It works, but it's crap. The rest of it, I really like, I think it's really cool. Like these little air hole here are this kind of hexagon shape that they use in their logo. I like all that. But you wanna know, is this thing accurate or not without me waffling on too much? So, first things first. 
So this is Chlorify, it's double labeled water. Double labeled water is the gold standard in checking your total metabolic rate, which is different to your RMR. Your RMR is your resting metabolic rate, and then you add neat, thermal effect to food, activity, and then you get your total rate. So Chlorify is the most accurate way, or double labeled water is the most accurate way of working out that. The caliber mask or indirect calorimeters does your RMR, your resting metabolic rate. So when I got my Chlorify results, it, they also work out, but they'll use like a little bit of an equation to work out what my resting metabolic rate is. They came out with a number of 2015, and that will vary up and down sort of throughout the day. And when I tested with Calibre, we came out to really close to that number. So here's my Calibre number. It's 1.38. That number does vary up and down. So I asked Suri how many minutes per day, it's uh, 1,444. So I take this caliber number, multiply it by minutes per day, and then I get this number, it's 1,900. But then I decide quickly just to take the Chlorify number off this to see how close they are, 27 calories. That's crazy. I mean, people get really pedantic about calories, but if you're within 100 calories or kind of 5%, you're doing pretty well with a device. And the Chlorify, not the Chlorify, sorry, the Calibre came out really close to that. I also tested my youngest son. His metabolic rate came out about a thousand, so I just took it off myself, put it straight on him. And the Calibre doesn't know the user. It's only getting this data from the breast. So it doesn't think, oh God, why is Angus not breathing as much anymore? And then my older son, I tried him. Um, it was middle of the day, he just had a massive feast of an insane, he's an insane muncher, but his resting metabolic rate came up right about 3000, which seems crazy high, but it's probably just the calories he's doing. He's quite fidgety, he's quite an active lad. He's, um, he's a big dude. I'm not saying his resting metabolic rate is 3000, but it's probably over mine. He's taller than me, he's about as much, about as muscular as me, he's a little bit stronger in some lifts than me, which, but that's, that's boys, that's what you want for them. You want them to expand. So his metabolic rate, so we're gonna retest him when he's not had a big meal, when he's not had uh, caffeine and things like that, because that will bump your, your rate up. There is actual protocols now on the Calibre website for VO2 max, for fat burn max and for resting metabolic rate. I did not do those. I just did my own version of an experiment where I'm just testing it in the morning, which I think is more usable for me. So I've done that resting metabolic rate a couple of times and it's always come out round about the same number and I find that fascinating. So that on its own is worth the price of the device. The fact that you can test your metabolic rate every single day if you want to, or at least once a week if you want to, or at least once a season, so once in autumn, once in winter, once in spring, once in summer, is crazy cool. For that price, it's crazy cool. Because you would probably pay about 100 pounds, 100 dollars for an RMR test with a big fancier, more fancier mask. They also have a study on their website which shows that the, the caliber is more accurate than those more expensive devices, which is sort of like saying the original iPhone is available just now, like the iPhone one is available now for $5,000, but you can get the iPhone 15, 16 for $500. It's like, doesn't really make sense. We live in a crazy world where indirect calorimetry has been around for at least 50 years. And I think um, the fact that you could make it into a tiny device like this does not surprise me. If you, if you have big, massive, like we used to have big, massive rooms for computers and now your iPhone's more powerful than what they sent people to the moon with, that's crazy. And if you had big, massive rooms for indirect calorimeters, it doesn't surprise me that you could get it down into this small a size. So that's RMR covered. I think that's accurate. So it also does your, your, your fat burning. So the fat burning, so when we lose fat, we breathe out. So a lot of people don't know that. And I think that's exciting. And that's the carbon coming out, but there's a rate of carbon. So you expel more carbon when it's carbohydrates than you do when it's fat. So if I was to take in a liter of oxygen and breathe out a liter of carbon dioxide, that would be a one to one ratio. That would mean I'm burning a hundred percent carbohydrates. But if I breathe in a liter of oxygen and I breathe in 0.7 of that, so like 70% of that comes out as CO2, then we know that's 100% fat and then everything between that, it's called your RER, respiratory exchange ratio. And that, you can find the ratio of fat and carbs between that number. So from 85, it's like 50-50, it's that sort of range. I'll pop up a, 
a picture of RER scale. But this device will just tell you you're like 60% carbs, 40% fat, and it will move through. So I tested when I was resting. I've got a Lumen device that I've been using for about four years. And I find the Lumen to be really accurate, but it, it only tests you at rest. So it kind of tells you the state of your metabolism in the morning, what are you burning? So if you wake up in the morning and you're in carb burn, is that because you had a massive pizza last night? Is that because you were, is that because you ate too many carbohydrates or is it a, a impact of your lifestyle? Is there something missing from your day? So there's like a little flow you can look at and then you can make adjustments. I find Lumen to be really cool. I've done loads of little experiments with Lumen to see its accuracy. And then to get the exact same number on caliber that I got on Lumen, and I've done that a few times now where I've put on the caliber, taken it off, then blown into the Lumen and gotten the same exact same percentages is wild. I mean, even close I would have been happy with, but to say the exact same percentages, I think is wild. I think that is cool. So the caliber, you're putting it on, you can just sit there and you can see what percentage. And you can also see that percentage change as you start resting. So something I've noticed with Lumen is, if you first kind of sit down, maybe your heart rate's up, it will give you a higher number. But if you rest for like two, three minutes, that number will come down, come down. You can see that in real time in the caliber, which is wild. So that's cool. So that's also a cool feature. That leads on to finding your zone two. So where I'm finding a little bit of trouble with the caliber is at more higher intensities. It's not telling me I'm burning a ton of calories when my bike, so I use the Concept2 Bike Erg, it uses watts. So the calories apparently on the Concept2 Bike Erg, it takes X number of calories to produce X number of watts. So they're actually meant to be quite accurate in the terms of it, it requires that much energy to produce that much output. The caliber is always under on high intensity, but one of the things you can do is you can do a fat burn max test. So I played around with this. They do have a proper protocol, which is nice, and you should probably do that. But if you just want to test this out, what you do is you just slowly start ramping up the watch. Say you start at 50 watts, add 20 watts a time every two minutes, and then you can kind of get a detailed outlook, and then you can have a look in the app and you can see your fat burn. So your fat burn will maybe peak up on how much fat you're doing, and then it will start coming down. It's called the crossing point where carbohydrates comes up, and fat goes down as intensity increases. So the harder the intensity, the more carbohydrates you need. And there's a thing called the crossing point. And this is kind of where zone two, which is very trendy just now, zone two and fat burn max is all around about the same area. So you can find with the caliber, you can see, hey, what wattage? And then you can, if you've got a heart rate device, you can see, hey, I'm holding 130 watts at 120 beats on my thing. And that's where Caliber is telling me I'm at. I've written a couple of books on Zone 2. I have a couple of things. I will link them below. Caliber just adds an extra level of detail on top of that. These things can change because if you have a big carbohydrate meal, your body will just preferentially burn the carbohydrates. So finding your fat burn max will be difficult. If you've done a high intensity exercise, it may affect the numbers as well. If you're particularly tired, it may affect the numbers, but it's really cool to see it in real time and to see that variance of, oh, that, you know, that pizza last night wasn't actually detrimental, actually improved my performance the next day because, you know, I could produce more output, whatever. You experiment, you see what you like. When I've been doing, I did a, a four by four, so I did a four minute, warm up at like say 150 watts, and then I moved into four minute intervals, took a two minute rest, four minute interval, going you know fairly hard for four minutes, four minute rest, so on and so on for four times. And um, that was really interesting to do with the caliber. The caliber gave me way less calories for that, but what the bike will do, let's say I do an interval and I burn 60 calories and caliber saying, hey, you burnt 40 calories. During the four minutes rest, my metabolic rate is still increased because I have this oxygen debt. So when you see sprinters doing the 100 meters, they run and then they're, they're completely fine when they're running and then they're <laughs> breathing really heavy. That's called oxygen debt. So my th quick sort of theory is, so I do the four minutes hard work and then I'm in like one or two minutes of oxygen debt where my calorie burn is higher, way higher than my RMR. In fact, for that four minutes, it's higher than my RMR. And that's probably gonna give me a closer picture to that 60 calories I burned because it's it took me 60 calories of output, but there's a lag in my body of clearing that carbon dioxide of that used fuel. So 
the carbon is used fuel. So just because it doesn't come out instantly, doesn't mean it doesn't come out. So I produce 60, 60 calories of effort in four minutes. It might take eight minutes for that to show on caliber because I'm, you don't recover, you don't stop, and then you just suddenly recover. You don't go back down to the RMR baseline. It stays elevated, and that's, um, that's called EPOC. People love that when they're doing like high intensity. You burn calories for 48 hours higher. Yes, your metabolic rate is higher afterwards, and that could be useful. So the bike, boom, and then we got this EPOC effect. So that's cool. So high intensity is where I'm a bit dubious, but I mean, it's still cool to go, oh, I'm burning 100% carbs. That's cool to see. Your breath rate is accurate in this thing, which is, is cool. There's loads of cool features. Is it perfect? I don't think so. Is the app really kind of limited? Yes and no. I love the app. I think the app's perfect. But I think a lot of people will just look at the app and go, oh my God, data? Like, what does any of this mean? And there is little pop-ups on this means this, this means that. And there's certain things like your fat rate you have to wait until the end of your session to have a look at the fat rate curve you can see it in real time but there's not a graph there's only a graph for the calorie burn at the top i think it's calorie burn at the top which you can see it kind of go up and down which is cool when you're doing intervals because you can see that breath rate go up and you can see that calorie rate but then afterwards you can check your session and have a look at some of those details and you've got two tabs to choose from you've got this metabolic tab to choose from and you have this um, respiratory tab to choose from, and there's loads of other data. So the VO2 max was a little bit lower for me, but I haven't done a proper, proper test on that. I will do that. And like I say, I'm probably gonna make a video on each one of these little topics and discuss the pros and cons to them the way I do them, and then maybe we'll do it the way Calibre recommends that you do it. I don't wanna make this review too long. I think we've already gone over. I would love to hear your questions. If you have this device, I would love to hear your feedback. I'm impressed with it. I think it's cool. I think just for the RMR alone and having something like Clorify to, to base it on is really, really cool. See your fat burn max is really cool. And to see that that fat burn matches up with the Lumen or the Lumen matches up where the caliber is cool. I pop a discount code for Lumen below. I, if I get a discount code for caliber, I will put that below in the description box. I'd love to hear your feedbacks, comments in the, in the comment section, uh, what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Is this something you wanna go for or something you don't wanna go for? Questions. Anyway, Angus, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will check you guys in a future video.